Dr. Castrillo obtained a first class honors degree in English Philology from the UNED. She's professor uh, of German studies at the Department of Foreign Languages and Linguistics from the Faculty uh, of Philology at the UNED. Um, she has recently won the first national prize to the best uh, MOOC, Massive Open Online Course, given by the Spanish Ministry of Education in the first edition of such prize, which was in 2013. Uh, and she also won a national prize to the best open courseware given by the Spanish Ministry of Education in the first edition of such prize, which was 2008. She's also author and author of uh, numerous uh, publications on code, computer assisted language learning. And uh, uh, Jorge, Jorge Aruz Ita, <coughs> he obtained a PhD in English Linguistics in 2003. Uh, he's a professor of the Universidad uh, Complutense de Madrid since uh, 1997. His publications include articles on corpus-based typological description, contrastive linguistics, and English foreign language teaching, mostly from a, a systemic functional linguistics perspective, in various national and international journals and edited volumes. And uh, he has been uh, editor of the English study journal Atlantis, um, and is currently the coordinator of blended learning at the School of Philology in the Universidad Complutense de Madrid. Uh, so you can see that they both have a very long CV. And uh, well, uh, finally, uh, Jorge, uh, one of his most recent publications is uh, uh, within the Systemic Functional Linguistics Framework, uh, where he's co-author with uh, Julia Lavi and Juan Rafael Zamorano of the book Systemic Functional Grammar of Spanish, a Contrastive Study with English. And uh, now uh, I'm just going to let them give the workshop which is the interesting part of the session. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anna. Anna. Um, well, I will start uh, talking. We went to, so this is our, uh, our workshop. Uh, if you're wondering why we called it a research or workshop, well, this is going to be nothing uh, extraordinary in that respect. It's simply that since we are researchers, we've always uh, approached the world of MOOCs from this critical view of what are the good things that MOOCs can offer us and what are the uh, the ideas, uh, good things that uh, MOOCs offer. So this, is, this doesn't mean that our workshop is going to be for researchers, simply that we as researchers approach uh, MOOCs because in fact a MOOC is for teaching. Okay. So, so excuse me, uh, yeah. just a minute. No, but also that MOOCs offer a very great opportunity to research. It's a new new uh, way to research and uh, with, with uh, a great, great possibilities and we will see when we enter the platform, you know. So we will be show you an outline first of what we will be doing in this couple hours. Uh, we'll discuss the concept of MOOC because it's, we know that uh, people speak about MOOCs all the time nowadays but uh, it's not so clear that we have a clear conception of what a MOOC is. Then um, we'll see an example of a language course using uh, Media X, which is one of the platforms uh, available which, with which uh, us most of the mind was uh, more uh, familiar, has uh, worked most. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll focus on a number of, of uh, features uh, like videos, different modules, the communication tools, and we'll see some concepts that we uh, this kind of later, like karma, voting, etc. Then we'll also discuss um, uh, the, the new role of instructors because that's a key issue. Uh, it's not the same thing to teach a traditional course as to be an instructor in a MOOC. Uh, that's a key issue for, for having a successful uh, MOOC. Um, and then the second half, uh, the last part of the, of the workshop will be an actual uh, hands-on workshop, uh, internet permitting, uh, because uh, we have created... <laughs> we will try it. We have got some, some profiles for you, uh, so ideally we can all go into, into one of the platforms and we'll be able to, so that you can see better how things work and you can interact. Oh, anyway, um, then, uh, well, the first thing we wanted to do with you before we actually tell you something 
is ask you what you understand by a book. What ideas do you have about a book? I guess that when you came here, you were already a little so interested in books. So. And if it is the right question, maybe it is not the right question. What is a book? Or maybe the question should be what is mookish? There are many things that are mookish in the, in, the, in the traditional learning environments. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. What do you think about? What do you think? What is a book? Or what is mookish? Or, or what is different? What springs up to your mind when you hear a book? Free, free course. Free? Yeah. Free, yeah, free of charge, sense. not free of charge. Free of charge. Sense, because free, free, free of charge. Free of free charge. charge. Okay. Nobody has to pay for it. Okay. Okay. Good. Nothing. You have to pay nothing for it? And so, for not for, maybe for an idea. Maybe the idea, for the idea. Oh, this is an idea. idea. Okay. okay. Well, I, I've seen many books where, where you can actually pay for your certification. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. that doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, that is free, but it's, I guess it's because it's open, because everyone can access it, even though you may not have the the qualifications that you should be having to attend a course at university. And, and I guess the, the whole idea of MOOC suggests, um, at least in my opinion, it's, it's just a, a bit about elaboration because many times, since the, the teacher cannot, cannot do all the correction, you need to have the, the, the work of, other, of our, your fellow students help you. And, in, in, so I guess collaboration is really important. Okay, so we have, we have free of charge, collaboration, this idea of uh, accessible to everybody. And massive. It has to be massive. massive. It has to involve thousands of students from all over the world. Okay. That's a basic thing, otherwise it's... Otherwise we will have the end. It's a book or, a, or whatever. Google yeah. or... Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we have massive, we have free of charge. Well, actually, you know, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt, but when you were saying for, it's very good for research, actually the, the reason why the first books were done were for research. Yeah. The people that made them were not uh, so, uh, you know, uh, altruistic. Mm -hmm. They had some reasons yeah. behind yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Their, their work. They wanted to be able to analyze mm -hmm. uh, yes. the work mm -hmm. by thousands of people. Mm -hmm. but, and the, the way to do it was to... Yes, it's true. It's mm -hmm. massive. That mm -hmm. is one of the most famous. I will see that this is one of the main <coughs> pros of, of uh, books, no? Mm -hmm. of this, uh... That's the main goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else has any other preconceived idea about books? Only the fact that it's pretty difficult. He said that's collaboration, not in the sense of helping participants, but also in. Constructing new concepts. Okay. So not just so giving the opinion, but constructing knowledge. No, this is the difference. No, you mean that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like the, the the course in a way being built by the students as much as by the instructor in that sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, we're getting so, some ideas. That yes. Yes. Nothing that has been said is not true. <laughs> <laughs> so we yes. have. Uh, okay. We have some ideas then about books. Now let's. Uh, uh, so let's have a look at a video on yeah. YouTube. Uh, show you have uh, uh, maybe it's not a very new video. Well, everything is new in, by in books now. But as a new, uh, everything is new for us. Uh, um, yes. In general terms. In general terms, no. The Massive Open Online course is a response to the challenges faced by organizations and distributed disciplines in a time of information overload. It used to be that when you wanted to know about something, you could do a few things. You could ask someone, you could buy a book, you could try to figure it out for yourself, or you could call a school. If that school offered the course and the thing you were trying to figure out, you could go there and take it. You could get access to information about a topic. An instructor had combed through journals and books to pull the information together from a library. You might even find others who are also interested in the same things that you are. The MOOC is built for a world where information is everywhere, where a social network obsessed with the same thing that you are is a click away, a digital world. 
a world where an internet connection gives you access to a staggering amount of information. This video will introduce you to how a massive open online course is one way of learning in a networked world. A MOOC is a course, it's open, it's participatory, it's distributed, and it supports lifelong networked learning. In one sense, a massive open online course is just that, it's a course. It has facilitators and course materials, it has a start and an end date, it has participants. But a MOOC is not a school. It's not just an online course. It's a way to connect and collaborate while developing digital skills. It's a way of engaging in the learning process that engages what it means to be a student. It is, maybe most importantly, an event around which people who care about a topic can get together and work and talk about it in a structured way. The course is open. All of the work gets done in areas accessible for people to read and reflect and comment on. The course is open in the sense that you can go ahead and take the course without paying for it. You might pay to get the credit through an institution, but you're not paying for participating in the course. It's also open in the sense that the work done in the course is shared between all the people taking it. The material put together by the facilitators, the work done by the participants, it's all negotiated in the open. You get to keep your work and everybody else gets to learn from it. The course is participatory. You really become part of the course by engaging with other people's work. Participants are not asked to complete specific assignments, but rather to engage with the material with each other and with other material they may find on the web. You make connections between ideas and between you and other people. You network. One of the outcomes that people get from the course are the network connections they've built up through engaging with each other. The course is distributed. And all these blog posts and discussion posts, video responses, articles, tweets, and tags all knit together to create a networked course. They're mostly not found in one central location, but rather all over the internet in different pockets and clusters. There's no right way to do the course, no single path from the first week to the last. This allows for new ideas to develop and for different points of views to coexist. It also means that one of the side effects of a MOOC is the building of a distributed knowledge base on the net. The course is a step on the road to lifelong learning. MOOCs promote independence among learners and encourages participants to work in their own spaces and to create authentic networks that they can easily maintain after the course finishes. A MOOC can promote the kind of network creation that lifelong learning is all about. The course part is just the beginning. And how can you go about finding one of these? Well, news that a MOOC will be offered usually spreads on online networks. People who have reputations for interesting skills or innovative thinking on a topic decide to collaborate by offering an open online course covering that topic. Anyone who wants to join in can. In a MOOC, you can choose what you do, how you participate, and only you can tell in the end if you've been successful, just like real life. So just like in real life, I don't know, I don't know. So I think this is the theory, no? What do you think about this video first? What uh, do you think? Or, yeah, no, or, or, or what things have you seen here that add up to what we said before? Any new features here from what we said before? And another question is, has, it changed, has the situation changed in the last four years? Because I saw it's 2010. Mm -hmm. And things go rapidly. So I don't know if anything has changed in, in during this. Sure, we will we'll see. It. I think yes, you, you should too. No? There is uh, a lot of things have changed. Now the first uh, MOOC was a CMOOC, was a connectivist MOOC, as you should have known. It was um, it was connectivist, and it was almost um, it has it has had almost. Um, chaotic structure, no? this connectivism is a little bit chaotic and then it's, the evolution was to another type of MOOC and there are hybrids, almost uh, MOOC hybrids, uh, MOOCs, etc. No? Who will have a look at that? Mm. Well, it's a fact that uh, all <laughs> the things you said here before have been mentioned here, right? Maybe the guy added uh, uh, a couple ideas, a couple new things, like the concept of uh, lifelong learning, right? Yeah. 
which of course is very much related to the fact that everybody can access these things. If you can access it at any time, then you can be always uh, learning throughout your life, right? And then he also, I think, uh, an interesting thing probably was what he said about uh, things not being necessarily right this way or wrong that way. No, there are many possible ways to do things which should be considered successful. But well, basically, I think the idea that you gave at the beginning uh, were, were the ideas that uh, we saw in the video, right? But maybe now then we can, uh, Marigo, can tell you something. Yes, something we can things. speak about what's a move nowadays or what types and uh, types of moves, etc. No? So, uh, the end, with, with already, um, you have already um, talked about it, though. No? The end from massive, no? And the question should be maybe, what is, what is massive? What is massive for, an, for, for a move? From 150 to what number? And why? Why massive? What do you think? What is the what is the 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 meaning of massive? How can we um, quantify massive? I don't know. <laughs> what is massive for a teacher? What is massive for a teacher? Maybe a percent? Yeah. I think I know. Okay, tell us. Massive is. Uh, much more than you than people do in your whole life. Mm -hmm. Even if you teach 100 students mm -hmm. in a year and you have 35 years mm -hmm. uh, to teach, mm -hmm. uh, you will reach 3,500 mm -hmm. uh, students in your mm -hmm. whole life. Mm -hmm. But if you have a MOOC mm -hmm. and you do 3,000 every year, mm -hmm. Okay, it's much more than you would do in your whole life. I think, that, I think that's the. I don't think 150 is uh, massive. But don't you, or don't you think that massive, um, the concept <coughs> of massive for a teacher in a classroom, in a virtual uh, environment or in presence a classroom, massive for me, for me personally, is that amount of students that I can control. For me, massive. Maybe in a, in a language class, massive can be 10 people, mm -hmm. sometimes, no? Right. What is massive? What is massive? Only, uh, so, 150 for a virtual environment, maybe, maybe. For a language classroom or class, sure. Okay, this is my concept. Yes. What do you think about it? I guess it's really hard to define because sometimes, as you just said, um, sometimes, well, if you, you know, in, a, in a classroom, if, if you cannot correct other people's work, your students' work, mm -hmm. sometimes even 200 people would be too much. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you look for the really, maybe the not so popular courses on, on, on many platforms that you might not have in thousands of people, you might have maybe a few hundred. But still, if you cannot control their work, you cannot assess their work, mm -hmm. and you need mm, your, you know, your fellow students' work there just to help them correct their work, or even you need, you need, you need a lot of support from your students to, to build a course. Maybe you just think it's just massive. This is all really, really relative. I, I personally think that is something we have to decide for ourselves. But, but <laughs> I, I completely disagree. I still think that this is not the way to, to see it because the way MOOCs were started was to get massive that data and 150 is not massive data. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very close to that, not so much from the teacher's point of view, from the student's point of view, but it's general as a digital. Yeah, you know, you think. You think. But perhaps it's just the opposite of uh, personalized with the UK, right? Maybe. <laughs> it's my opinion too, I think. But uh, there are moves that, uh, that only have 150 people uh, registered. So, and they are designed to be moves. They are designed to be able to host thousands. Now, if not thousands of people are interested, mm -hmm. that's another thing. Okay. But if they can host, if they have the possibilities, the 
the servers mm -hmm. or whatever. You okay. Okay. To, to the structure, the, the structure. technical structure is yeah. designed yeah. for yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. And from myself. Also, also, so the, I think, the, yeah. M, the M was also very handy to start the acronym. So some, it's true that sometimes you resort to meanings that maybe when you start thinking about them, you say, mm, this is the mm -hmm. perfect one. In this case, probably it's a very good one. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you, uh, you know, you write off the what you mean uh, <coughs> in favor of uh, creating a nice acronym. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it is a nice acronym, sure. <laughs> So, and open from open, no? Free. Free. You mean free because you don't have to pay for it. Nothing, no? But we've heard here that sometimes, or the most of the times, we have to pay for something, no? For the certificate. For the badges, no? For the certificate, the most, uh, in the, I think, in all the universities that have MOOCs here in Spain and also Coursera, you have to pay for them, for the certificate. But what is important here is that the students know that they have to pay for it. Because in the first or second edition of my experience in Miriadas, it was all, everything was new. And this was also new. And nobody knew something, nothing about this, uh, this uh, thing. So suddenly they said, no, you have to pay for something, <coughs> for the premium certificate. So what is important in MOOCs is that students have all the information from the moment that they register. And you cannot improvise. <laughs> you cannot improvise. You cannot improvise, OK? So that, that is the most important thing. So free, but not 100% free. Sure. And there are MOOCs now that pay for a pre premium module, for an extra module, like the apps. No? They are free, but suddenly they were well free. So, and the second uh, important element from the open is that it should be always accessible. Like, uh, like, the open, uh, like an open research. But this is also not true, because the, the, you can decide, if you want, that the materials were <coughs> always accessible, but what, what is the meaning of always? This is another question. What do you, what do you think, about, uh, think about it? What, what does it mean always here? From the moment that I create my moon, from uh, to the yeah, end to the eternity, or just for the time that I'm monitoring my MOOC, this is another uh, thing that you have, you have to consider. Or are all the modules open from the moment that the students re uh, enter, or, or are they, um, are they se um, open sequentially? This is another question. So, I think, my opinion, is that the best, uh, the best way to open a MOOC is to open it sequentially, so first the, the first module, then the second module, and then not, not close it. No? So, the, the students that want only to pick a little bit of some module because they are interested in some uh, specific uh, module or material or didactic element, they can do it. So, open it simple so you can help the students to learn, to go through your proposal, through your scheduled proposal, but not close. No? This is uh, the opinion I have from, my, from our experience. <coughs> Do you want to say something here? This is a workshop. No? Okay. Then O from online. Maybe Jorge wants to sure. tell us something here. Yeah, well, this O is, also, is perhaps, uh, or is arguably the clearest element there. No? When one, one thinks of MOOCs, one thinks of online, right? Um, now, what use do we make of this online, right? It is online, but is it online as when you read the newspaper? Uh, is it online as when you chat? Is it online 
as when you send an email or is it online as everything together? Okay. Um, and is it 100% online or, as we know, there are now hybrids in that sense too. There are a blended, flipped, the flipped classroom, you have a part that is online, another part is not online. <coughs> this is, uh, we have to consider this too. What, what do I want for my MOOC? 100% online or have I the possibility? If it is not such a massive MOOC, to have also a presence, uh, a presence, no? Okay, so, and the C, for me, the most important element of a MOOC is that C from a course. Why a C? To avoid the C from chaos. So, it, with a definite, clear and systematic content structure, you have to do all the work before you begin. You have to work very hard before the door opens and the students come in. A very clear, systematic... So, this is the, <coughs> the teachers that um, um, mm, defend a C, an exclusive C MOOC don't agree with me, actually. Because C MOOC has a chaotic structure. So this network structure, you can, you can think about it. I think it's very important also that it has a beginning, an end, and a proposed schedule so that students have a guide, know what to do. Maybe they do not uh, follow our proposal, but they should have it. Yeah? See, books are less on this topic anyway. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay, sure. Probably because... Yes, there were the f these were the first MOOCs. Mandatory and complementary training materials. It's very important that you difference because students, uh, my experience is they want to know from the first moment what is what they have to learn and what not. What is mandatory and what is complementary. You know? This is very important. Also. And also the tasks. What tasks are mandatory and what does not? No, didn't. And also with peer-to-peer -to -peer tools. If we don't have the uh, uh, structure to work with these peer-to-peer -to -peer tools, so that students uh, can help the uh, can um, mm, yes do the, this match learning that helps uh, the teacher. So, it's impossible, it's impossible if you have a massive MOOC. And the communication tools, this is the most important, in my opinion, the most important tools are the uh, communication tools. And also with an assessment and certification system. So, this is uh, the C from course. These two are two of the things that allow uh, massive courses to be massive. Hmm. Because the teacher by himself or by herself can't cope with all those numbers. Precisely by relying on the cooperation between students that the course can, can work. Right? This is one of the um, most important difference between other uh, uh, virtual learning environments and MOOCs. Maybe you can use Moodle for to do a, a, to do a peer to peer assessment and so on. But in a MOOC, you need a platform, as she said before, a structure that allows you to manage hundreds and hundreds of students automatic, automatically. You know. So, <coughs> most importantly, what I've um, just said, no? with a mechanical system of self-management, evaluation, measurement of qualitative and quantitative, but also qualitative participation, and 
uh, here we can speak a little bit about these learning analytics that are so that we had, had told before. No? Yeah, this is what connects mm -hmm. the whole idea to the research idea no, that was mentioned here before. That um, they were first approached as a research tool because they allow you to study, to have access to all those data from, from students, results, etc. that you wouldn't be able to, to do just with your site with, your, with traditional methods. Eh? You educate all the quantification tool that the computer yeah. allows you to do. We will see um, after, when we are doing, uh, when you are doing the workshop, when we are doing the workshop, we will see after examples from badges, medals, what, what is this, how, how can we vote, what are the social uh, participation of the students and so on. We will see it now, no? But what is um, here very important is this qualitative, me automatic uh, measurement of the participation of the, stu of the students' participation. Because quantitative, that's, uh, this is not new. We know about other learning environments. But the qualitative, automatic measurement, this is the most important difference, this data that we have, because uh, of this voting and these uh, words and badges. Now this is the karma of every student. This is what measures the qualitative, uh, that gives a qualitative measurement. We will see it. Okay? So. And what is not a MOOC, no? We have told about it. What's not a <coughs> MOOC? is not an offline class. So. If the MOOC is well designed, that is the question. <laughs> that is the question. The interaction with the teaching staff should be minimal. And the students should know it. They have to know it. You have to explain to them from the first moment, Hi, guy, this is not a normal learning environment. You, will, you won't have interaction with us. I will not. Please don't write to me. You don't have my email. I, will, I won't give you my email. This is not the, this is not the question here. Okay? But students, they have to know it because uh, the MOOC culture uh, is, uh, students don't have MOOC culture. So, uh, although cura cu the, the new roles of curators and facilitators, the new roles uh, will be required. So, if you have a really massive course, you, have, you, need, to, you need help. And this help it comes in form of these two new profiles from curators. You know what a curator is, I think, yes? And if not, we can speak a little bit about it. No? A curator curate is someone that uh, creates contents that uh, make sense of the world uh, internet no? and searches uh, interest. Uh, interesting content for us. No, this is a curator. Filter. A filter, no? An academic filter. This is a curator. You know. <coughs> a facilitator is, is a moderator. Is, a, is someone who helps us to, to, to he, who searches for um, mistakes and so on. And where a problem is, a communication problem, and reports the teaching staff and so on. Okay? And what is also not a MOOC, a learning management system, maybe, or sure, you have worked with a Moodle, Moodle Blackboard. or Blackboard or something like that, you, know, you have experience there. Uh, what is the difference there? Maybe Jorge can tell us about a little bit about Moodle, because they have a, li uh, have a lot of, of, um, of tools that MOOCs have too, no? but... Yeah. Many of the tools that you have in, in, in uh, learning management systems, you also have them in, in MOOCs. Uh, basically, uh, the relationship uh, teacher-student is in between a MOOC and a traditional classroom setting uh, course, meaning that students typically expect a lot of feedback from, from their teachers. You can, of course, in, in, in in Moodle, in Blackboard, all these uh, platforms, you can uh, use uh, self-correcting activities that also help you not to have to cope with such big numbers. But we don't have 
uh, this idea of curators, facilitators, or the idea of awards where the students are promoted to uh, the categories they are more popular, less popular. Yeah? So um, LMS uh, systems are like a first step. Maybe MOOCs would have never existed if LMS, LMS systems had not existed before, right? Because it, they look like a natural improvement from that. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, sure. well, may, mostly I, I would say that the, the, mm -hmm. the interaction uh, aspect is the main mm -hmm. distinction between yes. LMS mm -hmm. and also the, the access, of course, because when you use an LMS system, um, that's typically associated with students who are registered in an institution. Uh, you cannot just register by yourself like as you do in a MOOC, that you go in, on the internet and you mm -hmm. sign up. That's mm -hmm. The free aspect, just, again, okay, the open aspect. Yeah. Okay, so that's very uh, a little bit of the kinds of moves that uh, that are uh, show you the most you have read and listened to uh, this type of move, the X moves that are actually the uh, moves like Coursera or EDX, EDX, etc. These MOOCs are um, uh, based on instructivist um, theories uh, like uh, Coursera and so on. <coughs> they, uh, there are basically three elements that interact or are very um, form the structure of, a, of, the, of every MOOC. C, so content, T from task, and N from network. These are the three characteristics of MOOCs. So, every of these three elements is still in every MOOC type, but one of them is most important in one type or in another type. So, in the X MOOCs, the most important element is the content. So, they are based on more uh, on, on um, video, video lectures from more or less star professors of the universities. So, and then they have uh, assessment tasks and also forum discussions. This is also in the X MOOCs, but the most important element by X MOOCs are the massivity, the content, uh, content based tasks, but not the networking. So, the first MOOCs, as we told before, were the C MOOCs that were uh, they come from uh, a connectivist ped uh, pedagogy. pedagogy. This is not English. <laughs> okay, okay. But it's Greek, so. Oh, uh, the pronunciation is not. I, I heard it. This is not English. Okay, so you have understood me. Uh, network based. So they have a chaotic structure from blogs. Uh, and all the, all the this, uh, web two, uh, zero um, tools. So, and uh, the importance is not the content here, but this knowledge, knowledge construction. A process. A process, yes, uh, in that networking system, chaotic, almost chaotic system. So, and what about MOOCs? What do you think about language MOOCs? Because they are very specific type of MOOCs, no? What do you think that is or should be the, the, mo almost in, uh, the most important element there? Maybe instructivist or connectivist? What do you think by L MOOCs? <coughs> yeah? I think it focuses on the business. Mm -hmm. In what sense do you mean to result? In the sense that the delivery of the content mm -hmm. and um, the, the platform, the networking platform mm -hmm. are both based on the way language is used. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes. Do you want to say something? Also? Well, I guess I guess this is. I mean, the the lean hybrid elm. <laughs> it, it says it all. It's got to be both of them. I mean, I don't, I don't know whether they the. I don't actually know what what percentage of collaboration and networking and what percentage of uh, content we, we should have. And it, it might even depend on the, the kind of language and proficiency level we are aiming you know, towards. Because sometimes, you know, if you're aiming for a more basic course, maybe we should mm, be more focused on content. Sure. And when we're advancing, we might need networking a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But, but still, this is a really complex area. I guess both are really important. Okay. So, I think uh, uh, this, this is a balanced mixture of, uh, of uh, content tools and networking tools. In what, uh, in what percent? I, I also know, I, I, do, I, I do not know also know. So, but uh, mm, the thing is that it's more balanced than in the other two types of modes. You know, that is the question. But probably, if I may say something, yeah, I would say with a general tendency to the content-based side to be more yeah. important than the networking side in the I'm sense that sure. I'm not sure. No, wait, wait. Yeah. When I say this is because, of course, the language quality has to be a lot of networking. That's why. But not necessarily in the sense of students building the knowledge. So you have like networking. Uh, more than networking interaction, but based on the knowledge given by the instructor. Mm-hmm. Okay, so in that way it is less connectedness. Okay. Yeah? So it is it is sure content based, but the networking and the forums and the question and answers and blogs and wikis and so on are very very important. You take you take the best part of yes. the system. I can do it. We can do it if you want, because we have the tools in the platform, so you can select and you can prove. And this is why it's a research oriented. This is why in MOOCs we are, uh, we are this, uh, if you make an edition of a MOOC and you can see and you can, by the learning analytics, you can detect where the failures are, where the problems are. You can change, <laughs> but not during the course, no. Always before the course starts, please. <laughs> and the, if not, it, it would be a chaos. Always before the next one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so I think we can we can maybe enter in a, in a platform. Uh, if you have it, the internet access, no. Okay. Okay, but in the meantime, maybe they can. And they can try to because it's so. Do you have internet access now or not? You have a normal yes. internet access? Yeah. 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 So we will give you a, a, a link so you can enter and we give you a password. So you, you will have the, the password also now. Okay, it is if you, if you write in Google Miriala X, maybe you know this platform. It's a. Yeah, this platform is a. I think we will. We, uh, okay. Mediana Systems. Uh, no. Mediana X. Let me show you. Let me show you. Please. Just a minute. Yeah. Just click on it, just click on it and um yeah. <coughs> and so So what is Miliara X? Uh, Miliara X is the uh, Spanish uh, some uh, one of the Spanish MOOC platforms that is okay. We can have a look at the other platforms. Yeah. 
So this is uh, an extract from Wiki, our our Wikipedia. <laughs> so uh, platforms, the most almost famous platforms were the Coursera platform, the EDX platform, and Udacity also, uh, uh, Udemy P2, PU. And here you have uh, some of the characteristics of, of these platforms. So for example, for profit, just all, uh, only one, this EDX, is uh, not for profit, it's an open source, an open source platform. And free to access, here, here you see certification fee, Yes, yes, yes. Also, you have what to pay for it, no? And uh, the credits. Some university, uh, uh, some universities give credits, credits for MOOC studies. So this is a very interesting uh, new uh, way of giving credits, credits to the students. So uh, these courses are um, highly evaluated in professional. A network such as LinkedIn, but not in academic uh, environments. So we are uh, now beginning, uh, they are now beginning to have academic value to uh, for uh, some universities. So this is a very important thing we have to have in mind too. So, and we are missing something very important. What about Google here, no? Keep calm. Sure, Google has its own platform. It's an open source MOOC builder. So I, I will uh, say you, say to you, have a look at this platform because it also has recommendations, uh, pedagogic uh, suggestions to build a MOOC, etc. I think it's uh, we can maybe this Google course builder. We can maybe maybe have a, a quick look to it. No, if not, we can do it at home. Do you? Did you know this? Um, no, it's an open source uh, tool, and
the uh, passwords and usernames <coughs> uh, in a moment. Uh, but uh, I was going to use this very same platform to show you a course which is already built. Okay? And then the actual hands on workshop will be one where all of us will go into uh, a course and will interact and, and use all the so that you can see all the advantages like what these batches are and what the what the concept of karma which is very important for um, for MOOCs and how basically the interaction works because the, the, one of the most important one of the main differentiating elements differentiating elements with respect to so as we said to Moodle and all the other um, virtual environments is how the interaction uh, allows us to cope with uh, the massive numbers of students. This Miriam access um, courses from the most Spanish universities. Maybe you know Miriam, so here is uh, also a professor or uh, a teacher of the Spanish uh, of, of uh, Salamanca University. They have already, or they are start beginning with a MOOC. Okay, so. Uh, you can tell us also about your experience with mm -hmm. Miriadax. Mm -hmm. How was it? Yeah, it's um, well challenging. Mm -hmm. The first time we are doing something like that. And uh -huh. well, the the only problem we had with, with the platform is that it's, as you said, Spanish based in Spain. Mm -hmm. So Spanish and Portuguese. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just to. Um, let people know that the course is here, it's a bit difficult because mm -hmm. we, it's a Spanish MOOC just to learn Spanish, so it's difficult to get yeah, to make that much. And then, for example, the. You, get, you don't have the English settings there on the yeah. Alex. I was looking like for them yesterday or the no, day after. Don't have, it's not possible. So people just. It's a base level, so A2 level, so mm -hmm. um, for example, just to. Uh, enter the platform, you have to understand Spanish or mm -hmm. Portuguese. Okay. So that's this is a problem. The, yes. the problem. But maybe they will change it because yeah, it has no sense. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh, really yeah. Even, you know, just to translate the word page, is, mm -hmm. it takes time, so okay. they, they told us maybe next edition or something. Okay. So okay. We, are, we need some help to, to okay. spread the course. Okay. That's our pro problem. But the platform was. Or fine. Good luck then. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we will be staying in contact. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Viviana's platform, and we will we will see very quick the 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 tools, no? So the, these are the it's a, a, a an X MOOC platform. So you have a video. Uh, uh, lectures, there are video lectures and so there are uh, automatic assessment and also the communication tools that you want to, to configure. So you can have, you have the possibility to have a blog, uh, PNR are the, uh, the questions and answers. This is a very good tool for um, 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 to measure the karma from the students. And also the blog, uh, uh, you can manage uh, the modules, etc. You have the seguimiento uh, of them. So this is the this is the course structure that I created. So uh, what I would recommend to you is uh, think about it for a long time before you you do your uh, your structure. So how many modules? Uh, the typical X MOOC in uh, Miriadax is uh, has from four to I've seen modules with uh, uh, twenty uh, so-called MOOCs with twenty modules. Uh, this is uh, not very operative, I would say. This is not very uh, uh, easy to manage, and also not for the students. So it, maybe it would uh, it's better to have uh, less modules but more structured modules. Uh, the structure is the most important thing in a movie. I would recommend to you always to, uh, to think about the structure. So maybe we can, I can show you if you want. Oh, the presentation leader, thank you for that. 
the presentation video is the most important video of the course. <laughs> Believe it or not. So, uh, think about the presentation video. I could say to you, I thought about my presentation video, but it's, it is not true. <laughs> it was so uh, quick, uh, it, all, uh, everything was uh, we had to do everything so quickly, so I didn't have time. So someday the people come, so your course, you can do your course now, please, do your presentation. Ah, my presentation? But it's, I have to think about it. No, no, yes, on the street, on the street, but it's cold. I don't have my coat here. Don't worry, don't worry. You're a teacher, you can speak. I said, okay, this is my presentation. I had luck, but in the, ne the next time I will, I will think about it and I will recommend it to you. So, uh, my presentation video. <laughs> I only laugh when I think Sorry, about that problem. situation. You went to this for which university? For the unit, for my university. Mm -hmm. For your university. For the Spanish uh, distance university. And you were financed by your university? Yeah, financed. The university, we have technical support from the university. <laughs> this was all the financial. And one person, two person for 20 people or 30 people. So this was the financial. It was also. Uh, so we will speak about the teacher's role. Oh, it's my preferred thing here. So you mean to, to uh, support people uh, helping 30 teachers? Did yeah, yeah, two or three months? people supporting 30, and the, uh, all uh, everything should be finished in a month. So it was terrific. When I think about it. And it was your obligation by your university? Yeah, I, 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 it was, I was volunteer. Ah, you volunteer? I was volunteer, <laughs> yes. And the other 22 also. That was for the Ibigalais and our work, no? Or yeah, was. but this, this were two different platforms. So we have to put all the content on the Ibigalais platform and then on the unit platform. At the same time, it was terrific. So. The award came later. Oh. The presentation for the award. Mi nombre es Maria Castrillo, y soy profesora del Departamento de Filosofías Extranjeras y sus Lingüísticas de la Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia, UNED. Voy a presentarles muy brevemente estructura, objetivos y contenidos del curso online masivo y en abierto que presenta la Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia, denominado Alemán para Hispanohablantes, Nociones Fundamentales. Bien. ¿Qué es lo que, en primer lugar, no van a encontrar? No van a encontrar listas interminables de verbos fuertes o irregulares. No van a encontrar tampoco relaciones infinitas de reglas, por ejemplo, para la formación del plural o de reglas del género del sustantivo con sus consabidas excepciones. Todo eso lo pueden consultar ustedes en gramáticas y, y libros de lengua. Lo que sí que les vamos, les vamos a, a presentar, o vamos por lo menos a intentar, son las, son las claves para el aprendizaje del alemán. Las nociones fundamentales con las que ustedes podrán arrancar y despegar en el aprendizaje de la lengua alemana. Como decía el lingüista Noam Chomsky, a todo el lenguaje humano subyace una estructura. Nuestra intención es precisamente mostrarles los pilares que sustentan la estructura de la lengua alemana. Bien, y dicho esto, muy brevemente, este curso consta de seis módulos que van a transcurrir a lo largo de las seis semanas en que de duración que tiene el curso. El primero de los módulos... I want to, to show them what yours? Yes. Okay, so what I think what was good here in that video, so bad, I, I see it and I see a, a lot of things that are bad in the video, but what was good in the video? I think I, 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 I transmit my, my intention with the MOOC very well. So if you do a MOOC, Think about what do you want to teach, of course. I, 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 I would do a, an English course or a Spanish course, but what uh, com, uh, the concrete 
uh, expect that you, you, you will teach. So, students ask me, students, excuse me, just for a minute, students ask, but is it a course where you, uh, you get uh, the A2 or the B1 Lual or the common reference mark? No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing to do with the common uh, European uh, reference. Uh, no, I, I will teach you how to think, how to think when you speak or when you write in German. So, in my course there were people that didn't know German and people that were uh, still working in Germany, Spanish people that didn't understand the native uh, fact. So, and I managed them, for all them to understand how to applicate the classes. For example, I think this is the thing I did well. That to the things, but this was what you I think I think is my opinion. What yeah. the title was of your course? Alemán para hispanohablantes, nociones fundamentales. No básicas, fundamentales. Okay? That's the you, difference. You understand Spanish or? Think, yeah. But I, I don't understand the title. You can't um, understand the title? Yeah. Yes. Because what's fundamental in the language? Fundamental the structure of the language. The language. The structure. How do you use the structure of the language? Not the basic notions, but fundamental notions. So, what is, for example, a case? How you applicate a case? What do you understand when you say case? And syntax, syntax or, or syntax, very little bit of syntax. I didn't have time. It was uh, just for uh, no syntax. The last module, a little bit of syntax. It was uh, morphology. Fine. <laughs> okay. But in a contrasted way, right? So like in a contrasted way. No, it's not in a contrasted way. No, no, no. I want my Hispanic Yes, they are Hispanic They were all, uh, it's always for Hispanic because I, I taught my whole life uh, German for Hispanic uh, because I know what they think and how they think and how what things they will they they won't never understand. Right. I know about it. So I tried to uh, to to uh, manage. The course with heuristic strategies, so you know, Holia and so on. So to, to give atajos for the for yeah for the for the difficult uh, structure of the German language. That was German for German for Spanish language. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Sorry. Come on, anyone? Yes. yes. We have some kind of transfer. Yeah. It's like yeah. The problem that we might have. Yes. Yes. This is what, yeah. So is that is that what makes the course fundamental in, in, right. in content? Or because even though yeah. even though some people might I mean even though some people might not know anything about German, you will give them what is yes. the most difficult thing, even yes. though some advanced learners yes. might even struggle with these things. Exactly. Oh, yeah. This was exactly. So, so the level of the student does not matter in this course. No. It's no. irrelevant. It's a, it was irrelevant. Yeah. And so I had uh, students that it was a little bit difficult for students that never heard about German language. So I had to translate everything I told in the video. And what is very, very important is the subtitulation, subtitulation, subtitling, subtitling of the of the video. So I had to subtitle every every word because I spoke. And, uh, Spanish mixed and also German and I had to translate everything so it was a very very hard work for me but uh, I think it was good results then after the whole work. So this was a video so, a video, so the importance of the video is clear and the modules. I had uh, six modules, the first module of preliminaries, so with we can see it if you want very quick. What time is it? I think the first one. Yeah, we were very quick. Yeah. So uh, and 
the importance of being explicit with the mandatory tasks and the complementary tasks and so on is here uh, uh, reflected. So, the new edition of this platform has a, a schedule, it has a tool that is called schedule, but the first edition, the last year, it hasn't that tool, so we had to, to, to do it in the text tool. So, this was my, this was my structure, everything clear, actividades voluntarias, let me speak a little bit in Spanish. So, what was here uh, difficult to explain to the students was uh, the platform is always better. Everything is better in technology and the Moon platforms are always better. So, don't worry if something does not function. Don't worry. Make the, the, the next task. So, don't stay and don't uh, be... <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And, Go on, go on. So this was my idea, and uh, of course, it's, you have also to consider that the different uh, equipments and tools that the, the students over all the world have that, that are very different. So, and there are people that you can laugh about it, but people that I can I can do my video, and you can then you you ask them, but do you have a web camera on your PC? Oh, what is that? A webcast song. You have to, to think about it also. If someone doesn't have the structure, he has to have the opportunity to do the task in another way. So maybe by writing in a Word document and then uploading it. So. Uh, uh, yeah? Can I ask, why did you choose Riada and not AX or another Because it's just something that, uh, that it, it's imposed by the, your university. Okay. Are you still working in a university? On a university? Yes, you, in, in Greece. Okay, so our university shows this platform. Yeah, yeah. And offers uh, offer us the, the... Maybe they are involved in the... the so America. Sure, sure. This is a platform. But we had, in the UNED, we had, we had passed last year. And now in, in our own platform. So this course was in the own platform, it was an open source platform on the, at the UNED and also at Miriada X mm -hmm. because it was for an award, you know. Mm -hmm. She got the award. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, so uh, two platforms. So you, as a single person, it's very difficult for a single person to do a book, you know. So maybe with Google, Maybe with Google. <coughs> I don't know. You, you can try it. Okay, so. When, when, when we go, when we do the actual hands on part, you'll see that it's more manageable than one might think at first sight, at least the tool itself. Okay. Uh -huh. We can see maybe also this uh, voting tools or, or the karma. We, we will speak about it. What is karma? No, what is what are branches? But I think we can do it or now or when they are in the. No, I think we should. We should, we should start speaking about okay. the karma concept now. Okay. Are you familiar with the concept of karma? No. Yeah. That karma comes from Hinduism, right? Karma. Yeah, karma. Okay, it's like sort of like based on what, at least the, the worst version of that is like based on what you've done good or bad in your life, whether well, you bring good karma to yourself or bad karma, then you will pay for those things or you will have your, your uh, reward for that, right? And, and karma actually, why are they using karma here? Why are they taking it from Hinduism? Because even if, if uh, the LX is uh, for the Spanish market, books, um, um, I suppose, originally uh, having been developed by people with an Anglo mind. You know, in, in the States, uh, in America, the concept of karma is very important, okay, because pe people are always talking about karma, this brings me good karma, but karma to the point that there was a TV series that was, my name is Earl, 
I was based on a guy who read all the chapters. Each chapter was about the guy trying to uh, uh, going back to people with whom he had brought himself as karma he wanted to. Okay. So the concept of karma is very important in, in, uh, in American culture. So because it's popular among uh, a good number of people in, in the Anglo Saxon population, then they thought that it was easily translatable to, uh, to books. Now, this karma is similar and a bit different. No? You bring by, by the way you interact with the others in the course, you bring yourself good karma or bad karma. And how do you bring yourself this good karma or bad karma? From the votations, the voting of the other people of your interventions. If you ask questions that the others think are intelligent, they vote your questions as good. Yeah? Like all these thumbs up, thumbs down thing. Okay, and, and also questions, what is I think very important also is when they vote their their colleagues as as uh, down. So yeah, I mean down, yeah. when some, some uh, for example when some student asks but uh, I don't I, I, I don't know uh, what is the, the complementary task or what is the mandatory task at that module that uh, suddenly he had 150 down uh, uh, votes, of course, and the people say, but you are stupid, you, uh, you can read it here, <laughs> yeah, you can read, you, you didn't read the facts, and this is uh, here and there and there, so this is negative karma, so, <laughs> but this is not, this is very important, because just the good, the good questions and answers finally became could vote, so you can you could work and not uh, the dissemination of this uh, uh, stupid. I, can, I have to say it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, but not stupid because the, the, the people are stupid because no, stupid because they didn't, they don't read the things. So like our students, at class. it's true, no? The they didn't read nothing. They don't read nothing, so they ask. And here you cannot ask because it's suddenly there are twenty thousand questions. Where is the mandatory task? So terrible, no? It's funny the the, the familiarity with which students treat one another. No? Yeah. They, they suddenly feel like part of the family. Like the example that Mario just gave might sound like a bit too aggressive, no? But it's simply like <laughs> one more example of familiarity with contempt. You know, it's like. When, when you use forums, people typically address one another quite directly and quite sometimes a bit because they assume, well, we are doing the same thing, we are pals, I can treat you as if you were my friend. Well, I think that's the positive side of this, no? It's like... Yes, yes. Yeah. Peer interaction. Exactly. Yeah, it's peer interaction. Yeah. Sure. And, and they also hide behind their identity. I suppose that it's not real. They don't use accounts with their real name. No, no. It's a, no. They have to do it. They have to do like it. The real name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. The real name because sometimes they get a certification and they have to in Coursera also by us uh, in the unit. So they have to to sign um, a honest declaration, a honor declaration that they are themselves and they speak from their uh, self. Uh, so it's very important. Although, although if you don't if you don't want to get a certification, oh, you can also just you know, yes. do whatever you want and not have your name on it. So. Well, anyway, even if your identity is public, <laughs> the other people most likely thing will be that they want the certification so they will be their real selves. No, oh. if not, then the most people don't want the certification. The most people just do the course. For acquired knowledge, they say it in the in the increase and so on, in the survives. So, uh, and anyway, the situation is a five percent from the people, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I was actually going to ask you about that because is that? I mean, I know this is something really great, <coughs> like a, a really impressive innovation. But still, I cannot help but being a, a little bit critical about sure. this time. I know. Of, you know, because. And, and also, I was thinking about how could it be, I mean, um, how, could, how could we improve 
uh, the, the success, uh, the, well, not, I mean, these courses are successful even though people don't complete uh, the course because they get knowledge and sometimes they don't even want the, to complete yes, the course. Yes, that's a different parameter. Yes, well, yeah, but uh, what about completion rate? Wouldn't completion rate like, is that? a great question. This is a big question mm -hmm. for books, no? How, how to avoid these dropout rates from books, no? Mm -hmm. This is a question that we have we have to think about it. No, it's not, you know, but, but anyway, there's going to be a module now coming up, uh, I mean, some slides coming up, on uh, what makes a uh, successful MOOC successful, mm -hmm. which oh, has yes. to do with kind of the same question. Okay. So it was about the karma and so on, what Jorge explained. So you have uh, uh, points uh, and so on. No? You have the, the best karma there. Are you no sure karma. Examples of people and their karma. Uh, examples of people with their karma. <laughs> <laughs> because the teacher can then consult uh, the student's karma. Oh, okay, it was a, a very good question. A very, um, a colleague of me of the Cantabria uh, University, some uh, wrote that. Who has taken my karma? <laughs> and <laughs> when the platform has had uh, technical problems. And he was a Dito or Genio, I don't know, I don't know, something like this. And suddenly he had no vote, no vote to go and he said, I will write a, a bestseller with that title. Who has taken my karma? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. You want to start to? You want to charge the battery? Okay. Oh, ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so. I think we. <laughs> and actually, uh, about the karma, uh, I read somewhere that there seem to be some uh, because you know some of these courses they issue uh, certificates which are recognized as official certificates. Okay, and some institutions. Like when you go with your certificate for one course, and that certificate might be good for you to join some other kind of education. Um, they even, I don't know for which platforms in particular, but uh, the karma may add, up, may add value to your certificate. So it's not the same to have a certificate with a 300 person, 300 karma as the same certificate with 400 karma. Because that tells a lot about your social. Uh, skills, etc. Okay. I'm looking for someone with karma. So, I think the easiest way is here. We, we will build karma together later. Yeah, today we will have all karma. Who he wrote it to the Dia de la Madre, the Mother's Day, 
and I have uh, Duneado it up to it <laughs> for the MOOC. Uh, I have uh, already written um, a chapter uh, for a um, publication uh, with the content of language, uh, the profile of the language teacher on the MOOC. So I think it was, it, it, it is, it is uh, really a good cartoon to think about. No? What are the roles of the of the of the teacher? No, of the MOOC teacher. Just a lot of things. A lot of things, etc. No, because I had a place for more. But he's a designer, a designer. He's a creator. You have to be very, very creative. Creative if you teach a MOOC, if you design a MOOC. Also, an, an actor, an actor. This is very important. When I was a child, I always wanted to be a, an actor. My, no, my, my mother said, my mother said, so, it's your time! <laughs> you know, this is another thing. But really, you have to interact, but at this, the same way you interact at, in class, no? At class, so I think it's, that is not different. Have you a have friend, a camera there or not? This I have is, a friend who says that behind every second language teacher there is a frustrated actor. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Any major, how do you say it? So, uh, technologist, volunteer, this is very, very important. You have <laughs> volunteer uh, mind, so, financiation, you don't have money for it. You, you will not have direct money for it, uh, just technical support. So, you have to like it. You have to like your. Professional. This is the only thing. It has to come from the heart. <laughs> because I know that you make you more for doing that. You have your salary. Do they give you time off? You already know. Oh. It's extra. Extra. Everything is extra in Spain. <laughs> extra and volunteer. <laughs> okay. As a prof and a move. No? This is what it is. No? Sure. So, but let's learn a little bit of about... Let's... Learn a little bit about success. Really, Henry Ford said failure is simply an opportunity to begin again, now this time more intelligently. So, and what I think about it is learn from mistakes, but uh, better if there are other people's mistakes, it's better. So you can learn more, no? The other makes a mistake, mistake and you learn about it. So, if you have the opportunity to, the, to do this, why not? That's why we will show you today two fa great failures, MOOC failures. Maybe you still heard about them. So, the first great big failure was this course of, from the Georgia Tech University, a very prestigious university. It was the fundamentals of online education, planning and applications from the teacher Fatima Bird. It began on uh, January 28, uh, 2013, and there were, uh, there were 40 students, 40,000 students registered, so not bad. Massive, quite massive. That's but <laughs> great big failure it was from chaos. It was suspended three days after starting, so people take care if you run a MOOC and think about it. Huh? Uh, they, it, it was finally cancelled. So, but why? What was the, the big errors from that course? The reasons. This is documented on the web. You can search about it if you want. So, how do you think about using Union Docs with 40,000 people? <laughs> well, it's impossible. It's impossible. Well, she did groups. She, she did uh, groups, student groups, to work with the, uh, Google Docs. But it doesn't. It was impossible. It was impossible. They delete the content and so on. So. She told about, she, uh, she, spoke, she spoke about a technical failure, but what I think, it's not a technical. Google 
the dogs is fantastic, in my opinion, but not for 40,000 people. So, the instructions weren't clear also. So, the instructions for the tasks, tasks and group formations, the most important instructions, people, to, so that a MOOC can function. If, you, if the students don't have clear how to form a group, this is a chaos. This, and this was a chaos. And also the obligation, the obligation to organize in groups and group works. You can't do it. You can't obligate students to form a group in a MOOC. But I can't understand it. Mostly because many students often associate books with freedom and that curtails your freedom. And the mentality, so you have to think that students may be access in the second module or in the third module where the groups supposedly were formed and how has, has the student to do or so what has he to do in the fourth course? Oh, terrible. <laughs> chaos. Chaos. Yes. See from chaos, true. Materials, too basic. So, MOOC students were stupid. So, the course is, is, is free, but it's not for stupid people. Just the contrary, people that, that learn autonomous, that I mentioned, that uh, adults, people that have a, a still formation, the most of the times in academic formation education. So, not too basic, no. Okay, this is the, se the first big failure from the MOOC. The second big chaos failure from the MOOC was this course from the Professor Richard McKenzie at the, from the University, uh, University of California at Irving. Uh, it was also in January and 37,000 uh, 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 people registered. So, what happened there? Terrible. The teacher left, he left the course, he said, hi, bye bye, <laughs> this is not something for me. On the run. During the fifth week, can you imagine this? With all the students there, and the, and the teacher said, bye bye. <laughs> and what happened there? The poor dean of distance education, is that here a dean of distance or of education? <coughs> no? The poor team had to do the whole work. It was terrible for him. But why? But why? The reason. So, he was frustrated. He felt frustrated because of the lack of interest of the students. He had worked, he had done, and uh, he did a, a, a very big and great uh, work before opening the door for the students. But, with what results? Only 40% became identified in the course. It's terrible. And only 25% saw at least one video and yet worked 50 videos. So, less than 2% were involved in discussions. But, people. So, the truth is that these numbers are not lower than usually most. You have to think about it. You have to think about it. That was a misconception of the no, part of the teacher. No, it was a terrible misconception. So nevertheless, excessive students' number to take tradition and control, top-down approach versus peer leading. So, the teacher has to know that he won't have control. And the control was very expensive. Uh, excuse me, the course, the course manual. Ah, yes, and also, <laughs> he had a course manual, this is very typical, also in Spanish universities. Was it to sell his book? It's a pity, right. and you have to sign it, and sell it, that's why he said it. So, that's the reason. <laughs> the reason is the last point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And not only, or, 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 or maybe, or maybe, you are, I think you are right, <laughs> maybe you are right. So, some <laughs> young person asked me, uh, in meeting for, for a week, oh, but, but uh, what is your book? My book? I didn't have time to write a book. <laughs> I'm very old. I have chapters, I have researcher um, chapters and so on, but my book for this course, 
and he didn't believe it. I don't believe it. I have a block. I have a block. <laughs> and notice that these failures are very important yeah. because we're speaking about uh, famous institutions, important no. universities, very famous, which very famous. lend their name to the program, to the to the course, and a failure like this means that suddenly the name of this institution and the name of the teachers, because the, the, the first one that we saw, if, I, if I'm right, was kind of a famous teacher yeah. face to face. Suddenly, 40,000 people plus the mouth to mouth, <laughs> where the reputation goes down. And now it's all over the world because it's a, it's a research paper talking about it's experiments. Exactly. And so, it's very much in the audience. You, you have to think about it. You have to think about it. When you do a MOOC, that maybe if, you, if it's a, a big thing <laughs> like that, it's very disturbing for, for, for a teacher. And then there is another important point which brings us back to the idea of uh, the completion. No, how, what was asked before, like how could we improve completion numbers? Well, maybe we don't really want to improve completion numbers because precisely one of the things that makes MOOCs uh, different from the rest uh, of uh, teaching methods or, or channels is that people do whatever they want. I'm, there are 15 modules, imagine. I might be interested in module 3 and module 8. I might not be interested in the degree in the certificate. The fact that people are not interested in the certificate is not a failure for the MOOC. Maybe it's a failure from the traditional conception of when you start something, you have to finish something. But a MOOC has this aspect of um, uh, lifelong learning where, well, I just want to learn this, and then next week I will pick something from another MOOC, and next week something from another MOOC. As long as you have people signing up for your MOOC, that means that your MOOC is successful. And then completion could be from a business point of view, if you are charging them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, I, I want to ask you something, because some things were not clear in my head. Uh -huh. um, for example, you said everybody is learning something. Yes. Um, is it? So, and, and MOOC, and it's, it's not, um, it's, it's for me, language MOOC, uh, you can't write a... It's a new logic that we made for this. Yeah, so it's not something that exists like a No, no, we are still creating, we are still creating the MOOC universe. And I tell about MOOCs because I, I work on MOOCs, but this is not a, a taxonomy, yeah? The idea behind the, the end there in MOOCs. Uh -huh. And MOOCs like language. Yeah, language. yeah, yeah. And what is the role of language? What is the role? Of course, second language teaching. Second language, language teaching. Okay. Oh, actually. Oh, actually. Okay. <laughs> and the other question I wanted to ask is um, could you say that the most important difference between a MOOC mm -hmm. and an online platform, an online educational platform? I think there are the most. I have to select only one. No, 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 no. you can say more. more. At the unit, at the unit uh, we are still working on uh, learning environments for for a long time. So I I would say the most important thing is not for the t in the uh, you mean uh, so you mean now the teacher role or no, about how to train. Okay. Okay. Uh, technically, 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 this. Uh, Maybe this this automatic uh, this automatic uh, automatic way of measurement mm -hmm. and of assigning the tasks to the hundreds and hundreds of people. So uh, you design a peer-to-peer -peer tasks, maybe task maybe, and in three or four days the students over the world they have the task they have to. Uh, uh, to to read and to evaluate from the, the other people and so uh, this automatic assignation if you can say it so is also very important so I think all the um, automatic mechanism in a uh, MOOC platform is the most important technical aspect you have to consider if you don't have a solid platform, you don't have a MOOC. It's impossible. It's impossible. And also the fact that anyone can join. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also. 
on a, on a virtual learning environment that anyone can check? Yes, also. You need to be identified as, as a student. And the learning and analytics also. These analytics uh, that for research are so, so basic. No? You can know all about every student and you have the, the, the summaries about <coughs> accesses and everything. No? Could you suggest um, a representative example of an org uh, in English though? Because this one is in Spanish. Uh, Coursera. You, Coursera. Can, you can register by Coursera okay. and Coursera? MOOCs, MOOCs. Excuse me? Apart from Coursera? Apart, edX, Udacity, these are all... Uh, uh, this is my question. You consider edX a MOOC? No, edX oh, is a platform. It's an open that's source. That's my question when I asked about the difference. This is where I lost it. Oh, edX is an open source platform, you yes. know? So, every institution can use this source to build their MOOCs. No, it's open source. Okay. Like so MOOC is the extension, it's the... the MOOC is the core. The MOOC is the core. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, I was also wondering, maybe you'll do that later on, but uh, are you going to talk about the specific specificity of language learning in, in, in a book? Because, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I've... Just very, very, a little very bit, little. because we don't have... Uh, uh, because, you know, some of us know about MOOCs and have been, but yes. I, I have not been in a, in a mm -hmm. language, yeah, language. Yeah. so that's, that's for me, that's the greatest interest. Okay. Because I have seen how MOOCs work, yeah. and it's difficult for me to, to, to imagine okay. how you I can tell you language. Okay, you have specific Especially tools. for feedback, okay. for okay. Robberies. So, you have, uh, you have spe uh, specific tools for the oral, uh, Competence, for example, there are uh, in my course. I I I designed a task that uh, worked with three sources. But for example, this, uh, there is a, you can create avatars that speak. So uh, I I I taped my own speak, and so students heard me, and then try to reproduce me or uh, or other people so and they upload these all free uh, resources to the course so, so you, you can the resources with the yeah, uh, yeah 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 it's dangerous i can tell it <laughs> also it's dangerous because sometimes <laughs> you have uh, so uh, such a big number of students sometimes these free resources don't work as as, as we would like, no. But uh, it was uh, it was uh, successful, I think, at the end. And specific also the subtitling. I talked about it. It's very very uh, important that you, that you uh, do this work with a great precision, so that students can understand you the whole, the whole video videos lectures. So it's very very important. Also, and a lot of things. <laughs> well, I was going to say specific so, things for, for languages. For yeah, language yeah. Language. Mm -hmm. And well, also, you can use this peer to peer task to, uh, to give students um, social or uh, cultural information about the language. It's very, very interesting. You can uh, use a, a, a high number of tools to do this also in the course. I suppose in this particular book you were doing, it was not necessary, but in other language learning books, I mean, language learning involves production too, writing, sure, speaking, sure, sure. so how do you assess writing? Oh, writing with a peer-to-peer task? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, 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 yes, the, no, yes. no, no, true. And I have read a research the other day, it's not like Wikipedia that people say, ah, Wikipedia, no. Wikipedia, there are hundreds and hundreds of eyes working and, uh, and uh, hundreds and hundreds of people working and thinking about, oh, just one thing. So, at the end, this work is uh, very, very important and it's a very, very academic and scientific work. Also with the rubrics, if you can design a good rubric, for writing. So you can say to your uh, students, hi guys, 
take care of this, that the student does, uh, he has to write about, uh, I don't know, I don't know, something, or dialogue. So, take care of a, a good speci uh, specific rubric so that the students can use it to evaluate their peers. Okay? And you do, and you do, and five, uh, so, uh, the research I read was five, um, five students research one work. So, the results of these five people looking at your work is exactly the same as the teacher, or, or better, better, even better, because you have to, uh, to, to evaluate hundreds and hundreds of people normally. So, and the same for it oral, was a oral. scientific work, so and I read the same for oral production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the oral same because the people people with the internet people. they can hear, they can hear ninety people uh, speaking and saying that specific work, and they can say hi, but your R is not exactly the R I heard here. So you know, and I, and I think also that for something interesting for all of us here, from a researcher and a methodologist point of view, is that there is a lot to be done. Mm -hmm. and a lot to be said concerning methodology mm -hmm. yeah? because many of the problems mm -hmm. or basically all the problem, all the methodological problems that have always existed in traditional second language and foreign language teaching all these problems will appear here yes. with the addition yes. of others because of the technological issues etc. So I think there is a very fruitful field here. But uh, my concern is that MOOCs can be used also uh, not uh, synchronous. Uh, not synchronous? You can, you, can, you can use them later on. I mean, the, the MOOC has finished and then you can use the material. No, no not always. Uh, not all. This, this was my, my slide. Free or always? What is the meaning of always? No, you have the videos on YouTube, you have them always there. But, but the materials and the tasks. This is the, the structure of the course. It's not. And this appears. If you have automatic feedback, or mm -hmm. then, then you can do yes. it also asynchronous. But yeah, but only with that kind of feedback. With, with but you can't rely on the peer to peer is gone as soon as the, exactly. as soon as the course yeah. ends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, how, that's why you also have to conceptualize very clearly what you want to do with that course, what that course mm -hmm. is for. Mm -hmm. Maybe there can be modules within the course that can be left open forever, taking them out of the course, and maybe even make a mobile application with that to practice listening. To practice. Because it's so much work. Yes, yes. you to prepare one. Why not we use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the question. Or even adapt it for yeah, yeah. not for Spanish speakers, yes. but for yes. Greek speakers. Everything needs to be done. But ideally, if the course is successful, you will open it again the following year ah. and open it again. There are the three editions of the course. <laughs> So maybe before we finish, we could try to very quickly go into Miriarax. So yeah. we can <laughs> please Miriarax on your computers and how many people? Okay, perfect. Yeah, we can finance. Um, yeah, show them yeah, your classes the and the, the all the user names. Uh, are very similar, so I'll give you. It's always going to be. Yeah. I'll just tell you. It's here, also, here you have the. So maybe we can assign. You can replace us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. You want to do a nine. If you want okay. to enter. And it's going to be always. Uh, the username, show them the, show them the, uh, uh, the login page. You can enter here, Miliara is here. And so here in, in the Edición de Correo, you have to put the usuario. You have to write editor with the number I gave you, editor one, editor. Two editor three at here. In the in the correo. Yes, editor one two three whatever the number was that I gave you at editor dot com. Here is it again. If you want to have a look there, 
and and the passwords for all of you one two three four. You can access with that uh, password, and so you can access to a specific course that was designed for us for that workshop from the people of Viviana. It's have you already accessed? Mm -hmm. May I help you? So in this case, VRX is the platform. And here, VRX is the platform. And this is the record. You have your ask is right one. Just to press it. Yes. Here. Okay. May I help you? The password is there. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So all these passwords, all these users, all these users have teacher, teacher role. Yeah, all these, you have the, the administrator role here. But well, basically you should do the same thing to students plus some others. So then you will have access to building a book, building a book for language learning is the, is the book where we should go in. Okay. So then, Vivi Alliance is the platform of building a, a building a core a book for language learning is the book. Okay, in this particular case. Uh, and here you can see and here you can see the different things and the different parts of the course. Um, the but maybe for us, since we don't have much time, the most interesting thing will be the interaction part. Okay? So if we go, for instance, to a PR, a PNR, which is Q&A, questions and answers, you can enter a question there. And you see you have here, you have ask to pregunta, so you can you can click on Ask to Pregunta. Yeah, you call it, you give your question a name. About attendance. And you, and you ask, no? Yeah. Something like, do I have to attend any class? You can do your and question, then, and then we can prove it, no? And then I keep it. it, and then you should be getting it. If now that the refresh, the refresh button doesn't work. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Refresh. You just have to go out to different part of the course. Like you click, you go on to syllabus, for instance, and then you go back to P P and R, and then you leave my question there, and then you can vote my question. You can. So, you can ask something and we can vote also, and we can have a look at the karma that you generate over there. <laughs> the, question is this one. the karma is generated uh, with the questions and the answers, both. Okay? And. Not everyone can vote. First, you have to get the karma. You will vote. You will vote. You will vote. You can simply vote, but you can vote and give an answer, like what a stupid question or or whatever. Okay? You vote with a thumbs up or thumbs down. I think I got Yeah. <laughs>
something up with this we will hi, end. People, hi, hi. We when, when people, when students send questions, it's very important to tag the question because tagging the question allows them to search for questions. If you are interested in questions about uh, exercise one, then you tag it as exercise one and people looking up questions about exercise one will find all the other questions and answers about that. Okay. Yes, the tag question is, is also to avoid the chaos in the, the course. So, uh, if students don't have experience in other learning environments, it is very important to teach them how to, yes, how to work in a book. How to use yes, the no, it's true, exactly. You need a book to teach them how to use in the right form the communicative tools. You know? So, the most of students today actually that participate on MOOCs have already participated in another MOOC. So, this is the, this is the thing, no? Actually. I, my opinion is that in, in few time this will change because these moves are still arriving to people with uh, academic information, you know, because they have access to them. But my opinion is that in very few time this will open to other type of profiles, you know. This is not a very important question now, but I would always recommend you uh, ask this, your students if they still have experience in virtual <laughs> environments and in, in academic forum discussions and so on. If they have, and also if they have, it's very important in the zero module to tell them about it, to explain them how to tag the questions, the answers, how to avoid stupid uh, interventions that, so that people don't go to negative, no? You have to be, my recommendation, and my most important recommendation is here always to be the, so explicit you can. You have to explicit everything. Don't think that students know about moves and working on moves. No? Well, and I think uh, this is what we hope, we hope uh, you've expected some positive. We are... We uh, didn't have much time in the end for the answer part, but well, uh, the interaction <laughs> for us to do this part a bit late. But anyway, the profiles remain open. I don't know how long you can always explore they are into this course. And you know any way that you can... You can subscribe with our... our of course, of course. This would be the, the yes. that's what the best. Yeah, thing. sure. And I would recommend you. This is like a like a cyclus, like a how do you say it in English? Booklet, battle. like a battle. Yeah. This is like a battle in, in the moon universe. I I I I think you are student and teacher this, at the same time for the most of the time. So if you enter the moon universe and you register. It, Coursera, Miliarax, and so on, you will be student for your life. No. Okay. Because you will see topics, no? The whole time.